and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The Asset Store is full of awesome tools and assets to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video, let's check out some highlights for November 24. Let's check out the top 10 new tools and top 20 new visuals. As always, there's links to the asset in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. And Black Friday is currently live. If there's anything you need right now, then now's a great time to get it. There are sales on basically everything. The Unity Asset Store has a ton of awesome stuff. All the top assets are currently discounted. You can go watch my previous video where I covered some highlights and which assets I really recommend. There are three excellent humble bundles that are currently alive. One has gorgeous environments like this realistic lava. It also includes a bunch of nice weapons. You've got a giant realistic armor pack. You've got some tools for navigation tracking, world streaming and a bunch more. So this bundle is really great. If you're more into 2D, then this one has tons of stuff. You can find Isometric Dungeon, Cyberpunk City. It includes sprites as well as a bunch of sound effects. You've got some music. You've got things for making retro games, you've got sound effects, you've got particle systems, and really tons of stuff. Or for some more realistic stuff, you've got this one. Really gorgeous hyper-realistic assets, and this one has an insane discount. You can get some really high-quality assets worth almost 4 grand for just 30 bucks. This bundle is actually ending in just one day, so if you want to definitely get it quickly. Or if you're a fan of the Cynthia and Low Poly style like I am, then you can check out the Black Friday sale on their store. Pretty much all of their packs are 50% off, and they even got some nice flash deals at 70% off. They've been making packs for many, many years now, so they have packs on pretty much every theme you can imagine. From realistic to fantasy, cyberpunk, cars, shops, medieval, ancient, and a bunch more. Or if you want to learn all about marketing, how to get more wishlists and some more copies, if so, then check out the Black Friday sale that I'm currently running with Chris Zukowski. A lot of my own marketing knowledge I learned from Chris, from reading his blog posts for over five years now. You can check out the awesome free videos that I did with him to learn all about marketing. Or if you want all that knowledge in a very condensed manner, then check out his courses. You can get it with a nice discount on the Black Friday sale. And if you apply all these tips, you will hopefully increase your odds of finding success with your games. The links in the description are affiliate links, so if you buy anything through there, you get some awesome stuff and I get a nice commission. Alright, so starting off with a new version of a really awesome asset, it's Colorize Pro. This is a really capable, very complex tool for helping you essentially modify textures for your models. It is especially useful if you, like me, enjoy the low poly style. You can take some mass that you have and then very easily modify and recolor parts of it. You can change the color, change the emission, just about anything. So for example, grab a low poly dragon character and easily make the eyes glow red. The editor is really easy to use. Find the correct color areas and modify them. You can also use gradients or completely swap out entire palettes to change how everything looks. It's really amazing how different the scene can look with a different color palette. You can use the exact same assets and make something go from a cheerful game to something very dark and moody. This is a very complex tool, but thankfully they have some really great documentation. There are video tutorials you can watch to learn how to take advantage of this really awesome tool. This is definitely one of those tools that helps you get the most out of whatever assets you already own. I highly recommend it, especially if you enjoy the low poly style. Then if you want to make games for Steam, look at this toolkit for Steamworks in 2025. This is a toolkit built on top of the Steamworks API to let you essentially easily work with all of these Steam features. Now, technically, you can go use the free open source Steamworks.net package. You can use that one, implement it yourself. That's what I normally do. But that requires going through the documentation and learning quite a bit yourself about how exactly does the Steam API work, what functions to call, and what order, and so on. So being said, if all you want is just something that works, then this tool looks great. You just install it and it's super easy to use thanks to a bunch of custom editor windows. Just drag and drop some components to add things like leaderboards, Steam Lobby, Steam Voice, chat, and a bunch more. The documentation is really detailed to make it really easy to get started and take full advantage of everything this tool can do. So if you just want to focus your time on just making your game, as opposed to spending time learning how the Steam API works, if so, then this tool is a great time saver. Next, here's a simple motion matching tool. This is an interesting method for handling animations. I've always been curious about this, but never really tried it myself. Basically, instead of having the usual animated controller with preset states, instead of that, you just have a giant library of animations, and the system automatically picks which animation should be played based on the movement and the player's actions. This has a one-click setup process. It works with humanoid animations. The final result looks really natural. Really nice way, it plays the perfect animations, and it also has IK support. It does say how one limitation is basic locomotion only, so advanced moves, things like jumping and vaulting, those are not included. Although I would guess you can transition into a normal animated controller to use those. So this is definitely an interesting animation method that I definitely want to try. I like how it always looks super natural. Then for a fun, simple one, here are some editor emojis. Basically this just lets you add emojis as icons to your game objects. 
So instead of just the built-in icons, you have 1800 emojis and 1500 icons. This one has text search and color search, so you can find exactly what you're looking for. This is a very simple tool that does one thing and does it very well. So if you want to organize your scenes a little bit better, then some specific icons might help. Next, if you want to build an entire city, here is a road constructor. It looks super easy to use, just click to place. You can play some normal straight roads or make them really nice and curved. You can make them go up or down and it will auto-generate an overpass. You can add multiple intersections, change the width of the road and a bunch more. The whole thing is generated, so these are not pre-built objects, but rather dynamically generated meshes. It automatically connects all the roads in a perfect manner. This works in both edit time and runtime, so you could use this to make an open world game during edit time, something kind of like GTA, or maybe you can use it in runtime to make a game kind of like City Skylines. I really like how this one looks, very realistic textures and objects, and of course you can also use your own custom objects. Then here's an interesting one for handling global data. This one is basically a scriptable object data system, very much like that famous Ryan Hippel talk. You create objects that hold some data, things like player health, and then you can have multiple scripts referencing that object, and those scripts can listen to when that object changes state in order to update itself. So the player data, that one is not tightly coupled with anything else, any UI element and so on. It is completely decoupled and doesn't really care how it's being used by other scripts. So this is an interesting way of handling things. It is really great if you enjoy connecting things directly in the editor. Personally, I much prefer making my games mostly through code, so I prefer normal c -sharp events and normal good clean code practices, but this system is definitely much more designer friendly. So if you've seen that talk and you want to use that system without having to build it yourself, if so, then this looks like a great starting point. Next for a simple one, here we have flexible blur. Blurring the UI is a very common effect that a lot of games use, but it's actually surprisingly tricky to do. With this asset, that becomes quite easy. It works on individual elements, it works with all the other UI features, things like masking. You can stack blurs with a multi-camera setup. You can use batching for better performance and enable or disable dithering. Learning the UI can be a great way to make something stand out, some text or some menu, maybe some tutorial, and this tool helps you make that super easy. Then if you want a tool to help you generate entire worlds, look at this one. You can auto-generate large worlds, make them fixed size or infinite. This handles level streaming in the background. It supports multiple biomes, it's highly customizable, also supports procedural buildings and LODs. So this one sounds like a great way to quickly prototype your next open world game. Then for something super simple, here is a simple line graph. That's it, that's exactly what it does. I remember building a graph tool myself from scratch for my game Battle Royale Tycoon. I even made a tutorial series on it. Making it was definitely quite tricky. This is one of those topics that sounds super simple, but it actually has quite a bit of complexity. So if you don't want to go through all the trouble of building it yourself, if all you want is just something that works, then pick this up. It is pretty cheap and does exactly what it says. And up next, we have the Ultimate DLC Toolkit. This is an interesting tool. It helps you separate game data between base game and DLC. You can define all the data for your DLC, all the assets and materials and more. You can define all the icons, description, and target platform. Then you can build that DLC. In the final game, just write some simple code in order to load and use it. This one is integrated with the Steamworks API and Google Play. And of course, this is not just for paid DLC. You can use this to organize your game into multiple pieces in order to make downloading and loading faster. All right, so yep, those are the top 10 new tools. Now let's check out the top 20 new visuals. All right, so starting off with some super cool futuristic particle effects. Here we have a nice pack with over 100 effects. All of them really nice, very futuristic. You've got lots of neon, a bunch of cubes, flashing lights, and lots of stuff. A lot of these are pretty abstract, which means you can use them to represent whatever you want in your game. Then for something more realistic, here is a Roman street environment. These are super realistic assets. It's from Liarte Studios, who always does some super high quality realism. Looking at this, it reminds me of the game Rise and of Rome. I love that game, that was super stylish. So this would be great to make a game kind of like that, some over the shoulder third person action game, or maybe some kind of Roman city builder game. Next for some fun animations, here is a tactical hand signal pack. Definitely a very unique animation pack. This could make for some really fun emotes in your game, or maybe something proper in some kind of SWAT game. I really have no idea if these are actual real military hand signals, or really just something that the developer made up, but either way, they do look quite cool. You've got signals for on me, move out, run, walk, see, radio, and a bunch more. Then here's a really strange one, volumetric shell texturing. I'm still not 100% sure on what exactly it is. The description says this is not a geometry shader. So it's adding some textures onto a mesh, and they have some kind of shape but no geometry. Like I said, I'm not too sure I understand how exactly this works, but the final effect does look super cool. 
Then if you have a game in some kind of arena, look at this pack. It includes a bunch of stylized fighting arenas. So this could be perfect in some kind of party game for all the levels. Maybe something like Human Fall Flat or Party Animals, that kind of thing. Or perhaps you could use this in some kind of combat game. The player could fight some kind of boss in all of these interesting arenas. Next, if you need some blood, look at this one. These are some very realistic blood effects, very fluid-like. They are actually quite intense, so these would be really great for any kind of gory or horror game. You can even change the color to make something like zombie or alien blood. This is definitely the kind of thing you can add to your game to make combat feel much more impactful and much more gory. Then if you need some really gorgeous rocks, look at this one. Rocks can sometimes be boring, but they don't have to be. These look really great. They are super customizable. You've got lots of sound presets, things that would look great in desert or ice. You've got plenty of high quality rocks or cliffs. And the shader also has tons of parameters to make it unique. Next, here's the latest Cinti animation pack. This one is all about idle animations. They really go above and beyond with these packs. It is not just a simple idle animation, but rather tons of them, ranging from super normal to very interesting. In total, 300 animations. That's really a huge amount of idle animations. If you want to make your game stand out, then a pack like this can really help. It can help your game look much better than just a general, generic, idle standing animation. Then, for some cool VFX, here we have some claw slashes. Right away, these would be perfect for a Wolverine-inspired game, but it could also be some animal character attacks or really just any action game where you have claw weapons. There's tons of variety as you expect, so things like fire, ice, sparks, and a bunch more, all of them with the main effect and sub effects. In total, 19 unique slashes, and all of them look really great. Or if instead you need some full screen effects, here are some glitches. You can make the entire screen wobble, make it glitch, shake, change color, or add some strange distortion. Adding full screen effects can really help, for example, when the game is viewing something through a CCTV camera, or maybe watching a VHS tape. Maybe you have some kind of hacking minigame, or just something spooky. Either way, there's lots of places where full screen effects can really help your game stand out. Next here we have a bit of a strange pack. It's an animation pack and it's all about a dumpster. <laughs> this must have been definitely a fun one to record the mocap. You've got a character looking into a dumpster, then another animation jumping in, falling in, and jumping out. I have no idea who came up with this idea. It's definitely quite a niche animation pack. Maybe it might be nice for some kind of CSI video game. Then for some sci-fi, here is a great looking frigate. It is a super high quality model, includes both exterior and interior. If you'd like to make your own game kind of like Mass Effect, then this would be a really great starting point. This ship is actually pretty huge inside. You've got a medical bay, you've got quarters, bridge, meeting room, and a bunch more. Next, if you need some vehicles, here's a huge low poly pack. In total, you've got over 700 vehicles. Everything from cars, meaning sports cars, sedans, taxis, jeeps, pickup trucks, and a bunch more. So lots of car-shaped vehicles. Then you also have buses, planes, giant industrial trucks. You've got boats and a bunch more. So if your game has vehicles of any kind, then this looks quite useful. After that, here we have the latest Cinti visual pack. This one is all about horror. It actually came out on Halloween. It's a very spooky asylum. There's lots of scary stuff everywhere, lots of blood and weird characters. As usual, the trailer is really excellent. It showcases some very well-built gorgeous scenes. So if you want to make your own game kind of like Outlast or Resident Evil, then definitely get this one. Next, if you like red skies, look at this skybox pack. It includes some really great looking skyboxes. Most of them are in some nice red colors. You've got sunset or sunrise. It's always great to use a different skybox for each of your levels. It's one of those small things that changes quite a lot. Then if you have a farming game, here is a farming animation pack. These are very realistic niche animations. You've got things like milking cows, spraying some fertilizer using a water bucket, as well as of course all the usual ones. So things like mining, shovel, sickle, axe, and a bunch more. Or perhaps you want a spooky realistic visual. If so, here is a ruined crypt. This could be a great location in the game, kind of like Elden Ring. Or of course, you can make this scene dark in the nighttime as opposed to daytime, and suddenly it's a really spooky location for a horror game. Definitely looks very old, very abandoned, all in super high quality textures. Next, here is a nice game kit. You've got some cartoon tanks. I quite like how this one looks. The tanks are nice and cute. So with this pack, you could make a game kind of like Clash Royale, or maybe just a simple tanks game in single player or multiplayer, or perhaps make a simple RTS. Next, if you want something more pixelated, here is a nice hero. It's a tiny character, 16 by 16. You've got sprite sheets with multiple animations, so you have the usual run, walk, slide, and so on, but then also some attacks and shooting. In total, you've got four characters, each with a dozen animations. Or if all you want is just some special mystical items, here is a pack with a bunch of runes. 
They are very mystical stones. There's lots of symbols on them. I have no idea if these symbols are made up or taken from something like Norse mythology. These would be really great in some kind of God of War game, or perhaps something inspired by Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider. You could definitely make some very interesting puzzles with all of these objects. Alright, so those are my top 20 new visual assets on the Unity App Store for November 24. There's a link to all in the description, and as bonus you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. Also, don't forget to check out the Black Friday sales. If there's anything you need for your games, then now is a great time to get it. I covered my highlights in this video, or if you want to learn Steam game marketing, check out this video I did with a Steam marketing expert.